teach about, um, give you a little basic steps and kind of get you familiar with some bar tools and then show you a drink and uh, actually kind of show the drink that I'll be showing you is kind of similar to another one and I'll tell you the difference between them. Because I actually got yelled at by this one old timer when I was uh, bartending in this wedding. And he was like, that's not a Manhattan, that's a Rob Roy. So anyways, um, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some ice. Since I didn't bring tongs in this one for it from the back here. Now for uh, drinks that you stir, and especially for whiskeys, because sometimes you want the ice to kind of dilute it down a little bit, yeah, I like to use the glass stirring ones because it kind of helps it again dilute it. If you have the syrup shakers, I don't know, I, I don't think it makes it a little bit more professional too. So, <clears throat> you got your ice in there, you got your stir stick ready. So you're going to grab your shot glass. When I'm first training a, a, someone who is just starting to serve alcohol, I would rather them go by the shot glass until they kind of can see the amount that uh, they're putting into their glasses. So we put in my favorite uh, whiskey, which is Canadian Club. Um, Rob Roy traditionally calls for scotch, but I don't, I don't like scotch. And not a lot of people do unless you're like seven years old, so. <laughs> or Ron Burgundy, whatever. <laughs> so this is exactly one and a half ounces. And I'll pour the whiskey in first. And then, it calls for uh, vermouth. Sweet vermouth, not dry vermouth, which is the darker one. But I just got water here, so um, it's going to be about half of that shot glass. Um, some of the good ones like these have the uh, little marks on it for it. I don't have that, so we'll just deal with that, kind of estimate it. Put it on it. And now you're going to get this stern dice around like that. Do it for a good minute because you we want the water to kind of work its way in and do its thing. Now that that's sitting, which is actually the first step. However, um, majority of the time, I look at as a bartender, will already have it in the fridge, so they've already been chilled. But for now, let's just get some nice and there. Get it a little bit cool there. I usually drink it down so fast enough it doesn't even matter if it's chilled or not anyway. <laughs> so. so keep on working on it all the It's really about not, you know, it's more about just kind of flipping the ice around really. Take out the ice. Uh, if they want it on the rocks, maybe try to leave one in. Uh, traditionally, Rob Roy's and Manhattan's don't really come with ice in it. So, <coughs> so it's time to strain it because you don't want the ice to fall out. And this is a um, Spring coil strainer, the old fashioned ones for me. And, you know, if you're in a rush, once you get fancy as a bartender, you can like, double up cups, all that stuff, but don't do what you can't do because you just like, you look stupid and you're not going to get a good tip. So, strain the ice. And you got yourself a rod right. Now it is a pretty potent drink. It's more something to a casual like sip drink, chilling out, drinking all the and all that. Um, now, 
the drink that this is close to would be a Manhattan. Uh, that's where I got yelled about uh, from the old time. Um, he told me right there on the spot that well, uh, Manhattans are different. And actually, if you go to a bar, I, I challenge you to do this. Go to the bar, I guarantee you they will serve you a Rob Roy instead of Manhattan. Um, and on top of that, instead of one and a half ounces of whiskey, it's two ounces. And then it's only a, like a quarter ounce of vermouth and then a dash of uh, bitters. Uh, a really famous bitter is Angustria bitter, or um, most places just use the syrup from the Machino cherries. So uh, that's the difference between Manhattan and Rob Roy. And we'll